Most of the world didn't have it until colonization started in the 15th century. And it's the one blood type that is least likely to mutate or interact with other blood types. In the heart of the Americas lies a profound enigma that has puzzled scientists and historians for centuries. It's a mystery that traces back through the annals of time, whispered in the legends of ancient civilizations, and etched into the very bloodlines of indigenous peoples. The typo blood, a genetic anomaly, has been found to hold within its crimson depths the secrets of a lineage as ancient as the continent itself. But what exactly makes this blood type so unique? Is it merely a quirk of genetics, or does it hold the key to unlocking the secrets of our ancestors? Join us as we unravel the history and mystery of Type O blood, an indigenous heritage in the Americas. The Basics of Blood The vital essence that flows through our veins, known as blood, is not just essential for keeping us alive, it tells a remarkable story about our history, genetics, and evolution. At the core of this narrative lies the blood group system, which categorizes human blood into four main types, A, B, AB, and O. These types depend on whether specific antigens are present on the surface of our red blood cells. Antigens are proteins and sugars that decorate these cells and can trigger reactions from our immune system. Types A and B have their respective antigens, while AB has both, and O lacks them entirely. O blood, often referred to as the universal donor, is precious in emergencies and transfusions because it minimizes the risk of rejection in recipients with different blood types. Interestingly, O blood is more prevalent among indigenous peoples of the Americas. One reason for this wide extension could be the evolutionary advantages it offers. O blood, lacking A and B antigens, may have a reduced risk of hosting certain diseases, providing a survival edge. Some studies even suggest that O blood might offer more protection against severe diseases like malaria. While this theory aligns more with blood type distribution in Africa, it still adds to the complexity of the story. Examining the distribution of blood types among different populations reveals a captivating tale of human migration and adaptation. Globally, type O is the most common blood type, but its prevalence varies significantly by region. In the Americas, particularly among indigenous groups, the proportion of type O blood is remarkably high, indicating strong evolutionary selection over thousands of years. The exact reasons for this preference remain somewhat mysterious, but they likely involve a combination of environmental challenges and disease resistance. One theory suggests that the supposedly superior oxygen delivery of type O blood at higher altitudes may have given ancient inhabitants of the Americas' mountainous regions a survival advantage. This great deal of fine detail of blood types paints a fascinating picture of our past, highlighting the deep connections between our biology, environment, and history. It shows how our bodies have adapted over time to various challenges, leaving a lasting imprint on our genetic makeup and shaping our present-day health outcomes. Geographic Lineage Mysteries the global spread of different blood types tells an intriguing story about how humans have moved around the world throughout history. Among all the patterns, the frequency of type O blood in the Americas is especially fascinating. These blood types vary across different regions, and understanding these variations helps unravel the complex history of human migration and interaction. Blood type distribution varies widely across the globe, reflecting thousands of years of human evolution and movement. While type O is the most common worldwide, its dominance differs from region to region. In Africa, where human life is believed to have originated, type O blood is highly prevalent, suggesting it may be the oldest blood type. As people migrated into Europe and Asia, the prevalence of type O decreased, with type A becoming more common in Western Europe and type B in Central and Eastern Asia. This shift suggests a complex interplay between genetics, environment, and social structures shaping human populations over millennia. The striking difference in the occurrence of type O blood in the Americas, particularly among indigenous populations, raises intriguing questions about ancient migrations and population dynamics. In many indigenous communities, type O blood reaches frequencies as high as 90 to 100 percent, contrasting with the global average of around 62 percent. Theories suggest that ancient migrants to the Americas, who likely crossed a land bridge during the last ice age, carried predominantly type O blood. These early migrants eventually became the ancestors of today's indigenous peoples. 
The isolation of the Americas from Eurasia until the arrival of Europeans could explain the high prevalence and maintenance of type O blood. Limited contact with other populations restricted the introduction of new genetic variants, allowing type O to become entrenched in the gene pool of indigenous populations. Additionally, selective pressures such as diseases and environmental factors may have favored individuals with type O blood, further increasing its prevalence. Comparing the frequency of type O blood in the Americas with that of other isolated populations worldwide provides additional insights into the impact of migration and isolation on blood type distribution. While some Pacific islands and remote communities also show high occurrences of certain blood types due to their unique migration histories and periods of isolation, the dominance of type O in the Americas remains unparalleled. This is the unique historical and prehistoric context of the continents, prompting questions about the movements and survival strategies of ancient peoples. Tracing the Type O Trail the story of Type O blood's journey through history and across the vast landscapes of the Americas is full of mystery, strength, and change. Our tale starts with the migration of early humans to the Americas, a huge journey over thousands of years as they crossed the land bridge from Asia during the last Ice Age. These pioneers brought with them genetic markers that would shape the bloodlines of their descendants, including the O gene, a quiet signal of survival and adaptation. Scientific studies looking at blood type distribution among among native populations have found interesting patterns. An important study in the 1980s with Native American populations in Arizona showed that 99% of participants had type O blood. This high number is seen in native communities from the snowy mountains of Canada to the lush rainforests of the Amazon. But why is type O blood so common among these groups? The answer might be found in the process of natural selection and adapting to the environment. Early settlers faced tough conditions where type O blood could have been really helpful. Its lack of A and B antigens might have reduced the risk of diseases, common in tough environments. Also, people with type O blood might have been better at adapting to different conditions, making it more common. As native peoples spread across the continent, those with type O blood might have been better at surviving and passing their genetic heritage through generations. This process happened over thousands of years, leading to the big presence of type O blood seen today among native populations. But the story of type O blood isn't just about surviving tough conditions and diseases. It's also about human connection and shared history, acting as a biological link, bringing together different communities across the continent. Recent advances in deoxyribonucleic acid technology have allowed scientists to trace lineages and migrations very accurately, confirming the ancient origins of type O blood in the Americas. However, this historical journey isn't just interesting for academics. It has big implications for health and medicine among native populations. The universal donor status of type O blood makes it important for blood transfusions and emergency medical care, showing the urgent need for blood donation in these communities where type O blood is really wanted but not always available. Modern Implication of Ancient Blood Tracing the journey from ancient times to today, we find that type O blood has important implications for modern medicine and healthcare. Exploring its mysterious beginnings and evolutionary benefits shows how it affects medical treatments, urgent responses, and the global blood supply. Type O blood is crucial in today's medical practices, especially in emergencies where immediate transfusions are needed. Its special characteristics make it the basis of emergency care and surgeries. Type O negative blood is highly valued as it can be given to patients of any blood type without causing problems. This is important in emergencies when the patient's blood type is unknown. Also, type O positive blood, while not universally compatible, can still be given to many people with a positive RH factor. The need for type O blood, especially O negative, remains high worldwide, from emergency rooms to disaster zones and battlefields. It's often the top choice for transfusions when the recipient's blood type is uncertain. This shows the ongoing need for type O blood donors and the importance of having enough in blood banks and hospitals. However, the ability of type O blood to be given to anyone also creates challenges, like potential shortages because it's in high demand for various medical emergencies. Balancing the availability of type O blood with the needs of daily medical care and emergencies is a constant challenge for healthcare systems worldwide. Besides transfusions, the prevalence of type O blood has wider implications for medical and genetic research. Research suggests that blood type may affect susceptibility to certain diseases, with type O individuals possibly having a lower risk of coronary heart disease and different responses to pathogens. 
Understanding this link could change preventive health care and treatment methods. Ethical and social issues also come up, like ensuring fair access to type O blood, particularly in areas with fewer people who have it or less advanced health care systems. Increasing blood donation rates, improving storage and distribution methods, and promoting international cooperation are important steps to tackle these challenges. Looking ahead, the ancient origins and current importance of type O blood will continue to influence transfusion medicine, genetic research, and public health policies. Advances in artificial blood products, blood typing technologies, and genetic engineering might offer new answers to supply and compatibility issues. However, the natural properties of type O blood and its role as a universal donor are likely to stay crucial in emergency medicine and transfusion practices. The Evolutionary Advantage the high occurrence of type O blood among Native American populations, especially in challenging environments like high altitudes, has intrigued scientists for years. This section delves into intriguing theories suggesting that type O blood might have given ancient peoples an evolutionary edge, helping them not just survive but thrive in tough habitats. One fascinating angle is how type O blood could aid in adapting to high altitudes. For thousands of years, people have lived in the Andes, where oxygen is scarce. To cope, their bodies underwent significant changes. Interestingly, many indigenous people in these regions have type O blood, hinting at a potential connection between this blood type and surviving in low oxygen environments. So why might type O blood be advantageous in such places? One theory focuses on blood thickness and oxygen delivery. Type O blood tends to be less thick than types A, B, or AB, which could mean smoother blood flow and better oxygen delivery to tissues in low oxygen conditions, a crucial advantage for high altitude living. Another aspect is disease resistance. Historical records suggest that diseases may have affected people with A or B blood more severely. Some studies suggest that type O individuals have a lower risk of severe malaria. While malaria wasn't a big concern in pre-Columbian America, this hints at a broader idea. Lacking A and B antigens on red blood cells might offer some protection against pathogens that target these molecules, reducing the impact of infectious diseases. There's also a link between diet and metabolism. Indigenous diets varied greatly, from seafood-rich diets in the Pacific Northwest to corn-based diets in Mesoamerica. Some research suggests that blood type could affect how well people digest food and metabolize nutrients. Type O blood might be better suited for diets high in protein and fat, which is common among hunter-gatherer societies. Another interesting angle is the social aspect. In tight-knit indigenous communities, cooperation was crucial for survival. Type O individuals, being universal blood donors, could have been highly valued in times of injury or childbirth complications, as they could provide life-saving transfusions, potentially boosting their social status and reproductive success. While each theory offers intriguing possibilities, it's essential to approach them with caution. The relationship between blood type and evolutionary fitness is complex, influenced by various factors like environment, pathogens, diet, and social structure. Likely, the evolutionary advantage of type O blood among Native American populations stems from a combination of these factors rather than a single cause. Deoxyribonucleic acid and ancestry. In the complex history of humans, deoxyribonucleic acid tech has become a strong tool in finding family roots. By looking at blood types and ancient family lines, especially the prevalence of type O blood among native peoples of the Americas, deoxyribonucleic acid tests show where our ancestors came from. This study looks at how deoxyribonucleic acid tech helps us understand human movement and changes over time, and also makes our ties to our native heritage stronger, as seen in the story of Sitting Bull's family. Improvements in, for lots of people, this tech has been super helpful in showing their native heritage, backing up stories passed down through generations. Finding out about ancestry with deoxyribonucleic acid is especially important for native groups, where stories and connections to the land and ancestors are really important. Deoxyribonucleic acid tests offer another way to understand these connections or find new parts of your family history. For descendants of native peoples, this connection can be really meaningful, joining history with personal identity. Identity. Finding genetic marks specific to native groups in the Americas lets us connect directly to the first people who lived here, learning about different cultures and communities from before Europeans arrived. Discovering native ancestry through deoxyribonucleic acid isn't just about being curious, but about reclaiming identity and rebuilding connections lost because of colonization. This link is really important for people 
trying to understand where they fit in the wider native community. Deoxyribonucleic acid can show a real link to the past, helping people get more involved in cultural traditions, languages, and community connections. Knowing about native ancestry through deoxyribonucleic acid can also be important for accessing resources, rights, and recognition given to native peoples. A powerful example of deoxyribonucleic acid tech bringing people back to their native roots is Lapointe, a direct relative of Sitting Bull. By using deoxyribonucleic acid tests, Lapointe confirmed his family connection, showing a link that's important both personally and historically. Historically. This shows how deoxyribonucleic acid tech brings past and present together, letting people connect with their ancestry in a meaningful way. While finding native ancestry through deoxyribonucleic acid is exciting, it also brings up ethical issues and challenges. Questions about privacy, consent, and how genetic information might be used are really important. Understanding deoxyribonucleic acid results in terms of cultural and tribal identity is complicated because being native is about more than just genetic. The business side of deoxyribonucleic acid tests and ancestry tracing has caused debates about treating genetic heritage like a product, asking who gets to use, understand, and make money from this information. Making sure deoxyribonucleic acid tech helps native peoples and respects their rights and views is super important. Neanderthal and Denisovan descendants Deoxyribonucleic acid tech have changed how we study family history, letting people trace their family tree very accurately. By checking marks in our deoxyribonucleic acid, scientists can guess where our ancestors came from, how they moved around, and how different groups interacted in the past. The Denisovans are a group of ancient humans that are classified as a distinct population due to challenges in defining them as separate species within the human family. In reality, both Neanderthals and Denisovans share significant similarities similarities with Homo sapiens, suggesting they could be considered subspecies of our species. These similarities are evident in their physical features and genetic makeup, indicating close relations. It's important to reconsider our perceptions of Neanderthals, particularly if we view them as unintelligent or primitive. Scientific evidence challenges the common notion that Neanderthals were intellectually inferior. Instead, research suggests that they were likely quite intelligent and capable, possessing unique skills and adaptations that allowed them to thrive in their environments. Contrary to popular belief, Neanderthals did not simply perish due to their perceived inferiority. The emergence of Homo sapiens sapiens, our direct ancestors, coincided with the decline of Neanderthals and Denisovans around 40,000 years ago. Understanding the reasons behind the disappearance of Neanderthals is crucial for unraveling the story of how modern humans became the dominant species on Earth. Although the initial focus of the study may not have been to investigate the extinction of Neanderthals, it inadvertently provided valuable insights into this phenomenon. By examining the overlapping characteristics characteristics and genetic relationships between Neanderthals, Denisovans, and modern humans, researchers gained a fresh perspective on the factors contributing to Neanderthal extinction. One intriguing aspect of Neanderthal research is the discovery of their complex culture and sophisticated behaviors. Archaeological findings have revealed evidence of Neanderthal art, craftsmanship, and even symbolic behavior challenging previous assumptions of their intellectual capabilities. Furthermore, genetic studies have shown that modern humans carry traces of Neanderthal deoxyribonucleic acid, indicating interbreeding between the two groups. This suggests that Neanderthals and modern humans coexisted and interacted in various ways, potentially influencing each other's development and contributing to our genetic diversity today. In light of these findings, it becomes clear that Neanderthals were not simply inferior beings destined for extinction. Instead, they were complex and adaptable human relatives who inhabited the Earth alongside our ancestors for thousands of years. By reassessing our perceptions of Neanderthals and acknowledging their contributions to human evolution, we gain a deeper understanding of our shared history and the remarkable journey that led to the rise of modern humans as the dominant species on our planet. Astonishing Crawford's Deoxyribonucleic Acid 
The remarkable aspect of Crawford's test is how extensively scientists at the Cellular Research Institute have traced his genetic ancestry. They've uncovered a depth of ancestry that surpasses previous expectations, prompting a reconsideration of human history in the Americas. Crawford resides in Hart Butte, Montana, nestled within the vast expanse of the Blackfeet Indian Reservation, spanning over one and a half million acres in the northwest region of the state. With a population exceeding 17,000, the Blackfeet Nation stands as one of the largest Native American tribes in the United States. Additional Blackfeet reservations are situated in Alberta, Canada. It's been suggested that Crawford's deoxyribonucleic acid analysis could significantly alter our understanding of human migration to the Americas. But what exactly do we know about this topic? The prevailing theory describes a migration of people from what is now northern Siberia. This groundbreaking discovery regarding Crawford's genetic lineage has opened new avenues for exploration and contemplation within the scientific community. By delving deep into his genetic history, researchers have uncovered insights that challenge preconceived notions and expand our understanding of human migration patterns. This achievement not only sheds light on Crawford's ancestry, but also has broader implications for our understanding of human history on a global scale. Crawford's residency in Hart Butte, Montana, serves as a focal point for this research, as it is situated within the expansive landscape of the Blackfeet Indian Reservation. With its rich cultural heritage and diverse population, this region provides a unique backdrop for studying the complexities of human migration and ancestry. The Blackfeet Nation, with its rich cultural traditions and storied history, offers a glimpse into the resilience and adaptability of indigenous peoples in the face of changing landscapes and shifting demographics. By connecting Crawford's genetic heritage to the broader narrative of Native American history, researchers are uncovering a complex detail of interconnected stories that span centuries. As we continue to unravel the mysteries of human migration and genetic ancestry, Crawford's test stands as a testament to the power of scientific inquiry and the enduring quest for knowledge. By exploring the depths of his genetic history, we gain valuable insights into the shared ancestry of all humanity and the remarkable journeys that have shaped our collective identity. In doing so, we honor Crawford's heritage and reaffirm our commitment to understanding the complex information of human history in all its diversity and complexity. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. Scientists have been working hard for ages to unravel the mystery of Type O blood, an indigenous heritage in the Americas. Among these native people, Type O blood was not common, appearing now and then in certain families, yet where it came from was unclear. Stories told of a time long ago when a lone traveler with light skin and blue eyes entered the tribal lands. Some said he was a lost person seeking safety, while others whispered about origins from another world. Whatever the truth, his arrival coincided with the appearance of Type O blood among the tribes. As time passed, the story of the stranger became interconnected with the tales of the tribes, his presence representing both mystery and opportunity. Some thought he brought something good to the people, while others feared his family line brought bad luck. Yet the real answer remained hidden, buried beneath layers of time and tradition. As the years went by, the mystery of the Type O blood persisted among the various Native American people. Could this stranger be a descendant of the Native American? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. The Lake Baikal Lake Baikal has served as a meeting point for people from both the West and the East for a long time, connecting them through genetic exchanges. This connection dates back to the Paleolithic era and continued into the Bronze Age. According to Bergstrom, these Siberian people might be the ancestors of modern Native Americans. However, the notion that the first Americans migrated to the continent via a land bridge from Siberia to Alaska is only sometimes accepted. In a National Geographic article from June 2018, author Simon Worrell explored alternative theories. He raised questions about how humans initially reached North America. Did they cross the Bering Strait on foot, travel down the Kelp Highway by boat, traverse the Atlantic via the polar ice cap, or were they always present, as believed by the Navajo and other Native American tribes? This uncertainty highlights the numerous possibilities surrounding the people of the Americas. Lake Baikal, situated in Siberia, is the world's deepest and oldest freshwater lake. Its crystal clear waters hold a rich biodiversity, with thousands of plant and animal species found nowhere else on Earth. 
Spanning over 20 million years, Lake Baikal has witnessed significant geological and environmental changes throughout its existence. In addition to its natural wonders, Lake Baikal has played a crucial role in human history. Archaeological evidence suggests that early human populations inhabited its shores as far back as the Paleolithic era, approximately 500,000 years ago. These ancient inhabitants relied on the lake's abundant resources for sustenance and shelter. Lake Baikal continued to serve as a hub for human activity. Trade routes crisscrossed the region, facilitating the exchange of goods and ideas between different cultures. This period saw the emergence of complex societies and the development of advanced metallurgical techniques. One intriguing aspect of Lake Baikal's history is its role as a genetic contact zone. For millennia, people from both western and eastern regions have interacted and intermingled along its shores. This genetic exchange has left a lasting imprint on the population dynamics of Siberia and beyond. The connection between Lake Baikal and the people of the Americas is a topic of ongoing debate among scholars and researchers. While some propose that early human migrations from Siberia to North America occurred via a land bridge across the Bering Strait, others challenge this theory. Alternative hypotheses suggest maritime routes or even the possibility of indigenous populations already inhabiting the Americas. Simon Worrell's investigation into these alternative theories sheds light on the complexities of human migration and settlement patterns. By posing questions about the various routes and timing of human dispersal, Worrell invites readers to reconsider conventional narratives of prehistoric migration. In essence, the story of Lake Baikal and its connection to human history is a multifaceted tale of environmental adaptation, cultural exchange, and genetic diversity. As researchers continue to unravel its mysteries, the lake remains a symbol of resilience and continuity across millennia. Native American and Polynesian Deoxyribonucleic acid evidence indicates that indigenous Americans interacted with Polynesians approximately 800 years ago, stretching across vast expanses of open ocean leaving clear genetic traces within today's populations, according to recent research. Contrary to the predominant narrative of European conquest during this period, the historical narrative often overlooks such interactions. The intriguing prospect of maritime contact between prehistoric Polynesians and Native Americans has captivated scholars for years. Advocates have highlighted the presence of New World crops, such as sweet potatoes and bottle gourds, in Polynesian archaeological records, a phenomenon absent elsewhere outside pre-Columbian Americas. Despite conflicting conclusions in several genetic studies, the hypothesis remains fiercely debated, with recent findings adding weight to the theory. The discovery of shared genetic segments of Native American ancestry across multiple Polynesian islands provides compelling evidence of a singular historical encounter. In essence, intermarriage between Polynesians and Native Americans occurred, resulting in offspring with blended genetic heritage. Statistical analyses further corroborated this event coinciding with the initial settlement of these islands by Native Polynesians. Leveraging computational techniques, researchers trace the origin of the Native American deoxyribonucleic acid to modern-day Colombia, shedding light on a complex and fascinating chapter in human history. Which of these mysteries of the blood type O did you find the most shocking? Let us know your answer in the comments section.